Hello everyone. Over the years, we've carried out around 150,000 site inspections, from massive commercial projects to small domestic ones. On the domestic ones, we've seen some issues crop up time and time again. And in this series, we'll look at some of them and how you can avoid them, saving time and money. Most of the time, it is fine to assume that a trench foundation is okay for domestic extensions. Minimum depth will depend on how much the ground material changes volume. In shrinkable ground such as clay, the minimum depth is usually taken as one metre from finished ground level. In low volume change soils like sand, it can be shallower at around 0.75 of a metre. Local soft spots will need deepening to achieve a firm foundation bottom. The width of trench foundations can be variable, but in clay it's typically between 450 and 600 millimetres. Bear in mind that a narrow foundation can actually be more difficult to dig and more difficult to build a straight brick wall on, as it is quite hard to dig in a straight line. The problem is that sometimes we turn up on site and people have dug the foundations to the right width and one metre depth and are ready and waiting for concrete to go in but we have to come in and tell them to stop and dig a lot deeper. This is because people have forgotten to consider the effect of trees. In shrinkable clay, trees near foundation trenches can be a big problem. The ground will shrink and expand as the local trees demand more or less water throughout the year. Foundation trenches therefore need to go deeper to avoid the effects of soil changing volume. How do we work this out? It depends on the tree type, the distance that the tree is away from the foundation horizontally, and the type of ground. We really are only talking about shrinkable ground, clay. On smaller domestic projects, we usually don't get a full ground investigation report, and so have to assume a worst case scenario, a high rate of potential shrinkability for the soil. In general, it is broadleaf trees that cause the most problems. Oaks, poplars, elms, hawthorn and eucalyptus. A tree identifier app can be useful for this. Where we can't identify the tree, a worst case broadleaf will usually be assumed. Once this information is ascertained, we would then use a depth calculator. This is something you can do too. Depth calculators are available online the typical ones are from the NHBC or Premier Guarantee. Links to these are in the video description. These quick tools let you input soil info and surrounding trees and calculate foundations up to 2.5 metres deep. Where deeper foundations are necessary, these will need designing by a structural engineer. So, imagine what would happen if you'd ignore the trees, dug a 1 metre deep trench foundation and booked a concrete delivery but the building inspector turns up and tells you that the foundations need to be 2.5 metres deep. Suddenly, you need to find a few thousand extra pounds and all of this just to get you out of the ground. Not money spent in any visible way. And it's not only the extra depth that trees can necessitate. You will also likely need heave protection on the inside face of the foundations. Heave is the effect of the ground swelling once the foundation concrete is in place. This happens because the volume of soil beneath the building is now cut off from the tree that was taking its moisture or because a tree has been removed. This extra moisture can literally cause the ground to swell or heave as a result. Heave protection should be provided where a depth of 1.5 metres or more is required due to trees. Specialist heave protection boarding can be purchased, such as Jab Light Clay Master, but this is essentially expanded polystyrene. The effect of heave should not be underestimated, as the forces involved can be massive. Sometimes the most viable solution to problems with trees are raft or pile foundations, both of which need to be designed by a structural engineer. A raft, as the name implies, effectively floats on the ground and consists of a reinforced floor and deeper edge beam, all laid on compacted hardcore. Piles take the opposite approach. They are slender vertical columns that transfer the loads to deeper lying ground that is unaffected by movement. 
We do come across situations where no one prior to our site inspection has realised that rafts or piles might be the best solution. So, always get your architect and contractor to look at the surrounding trees and ground conditions. If in doubt, any decent building control inspector would be happy for you to phone for advice. Here's a recent example of a contractor doing the right thing, emailing us some pictures in advance of our attendance on site. These are a row of Lilandi, so not broadleaf trees, but they were exceptionally close to the proposed foundation, only two metres away. In this case, we calculated that the depth should be greater than 2.5 metres and a structural engineer should be contacted. Once the engineer assessed the site, they actually verified that a shallower depth of 2.2 metres would be sufficient. So the contractor could dig a normal trench foundation, albeit deeper than they had originally planned. Had it been the other way around, they may have needed another type of foundation. This is a good example of all parties working together to achieve the correct outcome and save unnecessary expense. We come across trees that impact on foundation depth all too often. So, please make sure that your architect, when they come round to measure up and produce drawings, takes into account the surrounding trees. It doesn't really matter if the trees are about to be removed as part of the works, as it takes several years for the ground to naturally recuperate its moisture content. And it doesn't matter whether the trees are in your garden or your neighbours. What matters is how close they are and what time they are. Remember, if in doubt, we can advise over the phone. I hope you found this helpful. Cheers.